All right. So hopefully that will that will clear some of those issues up. And I have to say again, because I am not as experienced in Android as I am in other development platforms, that you know required a little research and all that. And I think uh, we can we can do a pretty good job of addressing that now. Um, we also, depending on time, might look at that third thread example. But the first two were fine with me. We can look at the third one if we want to, or we can skip it if we we don't want to. I almost guarantee. I have like four devices here now. I almost guarantee I'm going to be pointing at the wrong one or having the wrong one plugged in and wonder why it's not running or something probably three times during the next, <laughs> the next part of the lecture. All right, so the question is, is how do we accommodate different screens? And there's two big factors as far as that question goes. Number one is how do we accommodate different screen densities? All right, and we've addressed that to some degree, but I would like to come back to that and, and kind of reinforce that, those, those ideas and talk about that. Uh, I know in researching this on the web, you see a lot of questions, and, 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 and even I, when I first started looking into it, you see screen density and you think screen size, whereas it is not size, it's density. All right. Um, so let's talk about that first of all, and just for simplicity, we'll consider pixels just uh, uh, in going in in one dimension as opposed to two dimensional. All right. Let's say this is our average. This is an average screen's density, and we'll exaggerate, of course, for effect. And let's say the dots are the pixels are, are spaced like this. And the average pixel density was considered average in the Android world as 160 dpi. Less dense is about 75% of that. And that would be like, and this is approximate of course, but maybe spaced something like this. And higher density, which would be like uh, 100, uh, let's see, 240, 1.5 times, it would be like 240 dpi. And that would be dense like this. Again, keep in mind we're only talking one dimension here, but if you can imagine, the you know, same thing goes vertically as well. So let's say we want we have a a a line since we're not considering a, a two-dimensional image we're considering a one-dimensional image, and you know we can ponder one-dimensional image for a while. It's a, a line essentially, and let's say we want it to be five pixels wide on our default default size default density. See, I did it myself. Default density. If we want it to be five pixels long, that would be one, two, three, four, five. That would be this long on an average density. On this one, because they're wider spaced, the line would actually be longer. And in this one, because they're tightly spaced, it would actually be shorter. All right. Well, that, that can be a problem. We would want, regardless of screen density, if we want that image to be a certain size physically, um, we can't just use pixels then. And that's where DPI pixels, or DPI comes from, density uh, independent pixels. So, if we were to make this five pixels, that's what we'd get. All right? If instead we use um, DPI for this one, we would get it to be like 1.5 times 5 pixels, so that would be like 7.5 physical pixels. And again, the, these aren't going to line up exactly because I didn't take care to, to draw them exactly. And the 0.75 then would be like just about 4 pixels, so it would be like to that. So they would approximately 
or they, they should match if we do it, scale the DPI. Because we use the density as a factor using 160 pixel DPI as a standard. And so for more dense, we multiply the pixels out to get more pixels to cover the same length that we would in 160 DPI. And for smaller that are more widely spread, we multiply it by the 75% to get the smaller width that would be. And I have a little demonstration of that. I wrote, I took the, um, the um, welcome application and just played with it a little bit to show different stuff. And we can take a look at it. This is my phone. This is the school's phone. And we can look at it. All right. I set this pixel, uh, I set the pixels of that image to be 100 and, or I'm sorry, to be 200 pixels wide, I believe. Well, I'll have to look uh, at the code in a second here to see. And we're going to have this problem. Let me go in and set the screen time out for both of these so I'm not juggling these. So in this first pass of it, I made the, the resolute or I made the, the width of the screen a um, hundred and or a, a certain fixed number of pixels. And if you notice on my phone, which has a higher density, the image looked smaller. Well, let, let, me, let, me, let me get this straight and then we'll take a look. Here, here's my phone and my phone has a density of 240 pixels. So this would be a high density uh, phone. This phone has a lower density. It is an average density. So it has about 160 pixels. So in this first pass, I made I made the image a certain fixed number of pixels. All right. So as you can see, this guy is bigger than this guy. All right. Because the lower density phone, those, however many pixels I made the width, all right, take up more real estate because the pixels are further apart. Let me pull up the code so I can show you exactly what we did here. All right. I used the dimension file to set the dimensions, the width and the height to at dimension uh, bug uh, width and bug height. And if you look in my dimensions XML file, I set it to be 200 by 400. So it's 400 pixels wide, 200 pixels tall. All right. But I just used regular pixels. I didn't use the density. Uh, independent ones. So that means that when we look at this using top-notch technology to measure these guys, we'll measure from thumb to thumb. This is running the same code. This is running the same code, yeah. You notice that the first image is, is a fair amount bigger than the second image. All right. And the reason is, is again, this one has a density of 160 pixels by 160 and, you know, rounding. This one has a density of 240. So I made it 400 wide. Those 400 wide take up less space on a higher density. So that bug looks smaller than that bug. All right. 
So what's the solution of that? The solution of that is using density independent pixels for the size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and change that in the dimension file. And that's a nice thing about this. You know, um, I can put all this stuff in a separate file and I can just deal with it, you know, without having to search through the code or, or whatever. Here's when the fun starts because now I have to run the alteration on both machines. And make sure I have the right USB cables. And this is our, yeah, yeah. Or you'll watch. Maybe this will be the entertaining part of this. Right. Well, I've often said that, that I have a, a new adver a, a, uh, admiration for cooking show people to be able to talk while they're chopping things. I don't do anything with knives here. The worst that's going to happen is I'm going to hit the wrong key, you know, and, and nothing, nothing really bad is going to happen. But um, it is tough. That's why I like sometimes, sometimes I'll work on a program that I've already completed, but I want to like show the folks how it develops. It's nice then to have the finished version of the program, like a turkey that you can just pull out of the oven and say, and then you come back to it, and there you go. Okay, so let's run this. Now that I've set this to density independent pixels. Exactly. Not sure I ran this. Let's try again. According to this, it is running. I don't trust that necessarily. Oh, now it makes sense now. Okay. So now it is running over here. That bug looks the same as it did before. Is that surprising to you? Here, this is the one, this is the lower density phone, the, the, the medium density. Uh, this one, the bug looks the same as befo before. Is that surprising? <laughs> yeah, I was initially surprised, but, it, but if you think about it, it makes sense. This is the 160 pixel density phone, so that's like, Pixels and DPs are the same for that, right? Because 160 density is like the standard by which the other ones are. So of course it's going to look the same. It just took me a, a second to realize that when I was when I was looking at it. Uh, now, if I go and run this guy on it, I just download one of them, right? That's what I'm that yeah. Right. Exactly. That is amazing in a way, you know. You 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 run across almost any problem, and you Google it, and you see someone already has done it and has five different ways to solve it. Sometimes. Right, right. In the links that you provided too, I was looking at some of those and I came across the you know the portion in Android where it goes into it. I didn't read it, but right. I did find a right. All right, now drum roll please. Now the bugs look about the same size. All right, they do. Because now this is my the, this is my higher density phone. And therefore, since I made it 200 uh, dp instead of 200 pixels by 400 dp, since this one is one and a half, it actually made it like 600 pixels wide. No, that one's bigger than me. The one on the right looks bigger than me. One on the right looks, looks big. Yeah, let's, let's see. It might be... Okay, there's from tip of the thumb to tip of the thumb on that guy. And, oh, it does look a little bigger. Yeah, I think the screen's wider, but look at the, because this is from the edge, so it looks pretty close. 
Yeah. So there could be some could be something that we're not considering to make it a little off, but the point is, is a lot closer than it was before. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that could be. Uh, and oh, actually, the width. Of, well, the width of this one is 320, so it can't, of course it can't display a 400 pixel image. Let's go and change that to 200 by 100. Yeah, that's the problem. It, it, it's being compressed because the screen, it wants to display a 400 pixel image, but the screen's only set to 320. So hence the Android, the OS is taking over. The, the Android, yeah, operating system took over and says, okay, I know you want to display this, but we ain't got enough of space, so I'll compress you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The chop off. Okay. So here's 200 dp. And let's try this one with 200 dp. And I'll bet they're the same. Not, I'm just going to break down okay, so you're and cry and we'll go home. Yes. I'm saying the size of the image, but I'm doing it in dp as opposed to pixels. Yeah. All right. Now. Now the bugs look the <sighs> they look the same size. All right. And we could try the finger to finger again. Maybe. Dang it. We'll go from the edge of the paper to here. And from the edge of the paper to there. That looks very close to the same size. All right. So again, the reason that now it is the same size, well, the first error I made is I made, I made it too big for the screen. So that crunched it a little bit. All right, But when I then set it within the boundary of the screen, it got to be displayed the same size. Um, and I did that through using the DP all right, uh, as the dimension as opposed to absolute pixels. What's the difference between the DP and the DIP? Uh, same thing. Okay. Yeah, they both stand for density independent pixels. So I was, yeah, which is different than DPI, dots per inch, you know, and all that. And that, that believe it or not, that had me confused too. But yeah, it's just two different ways of, of two different acronyms for this. So, in the, in the bigger one? Well, let's look. What do you expect it to look like? Exactly. The size of the picture should be the same. All right, because this guy, we'll go to the real big one first and we'll skip the intermediate one because it'll just be between the two as far as white space. <laughs> Why don't they have a button in the same place on all these things? Yeah, go ahead. Stay tuned to stay tuned for part two of the lecture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, oh shoot. What do I? I want to set the time out of this. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, the, the question is, is now it's physically going to look, it's, it's physically going to be the same size. But the question is, is that a good thing? You know, we got this gigantic tablet. Do we want to 
have little bitty pictures on it. All right. So there, if you look, all right, let me, let me try to scoot this over. Yeah. And again, I'm not going to go through the finger to finger, but those look approximately the same. But as you've noted, there's, there's a lot of extra space on that. The this is a phone on the bottom. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Oh, shoot. How can I fix this so I don't have this problem? I should put in that manifest that the orientation's vertical. <laughs> that I wouldn't be doing that. And had I thought of that, I would have done that. But uh, all right. So now those two look the same thing. Now, does anything look weird to you? Yeah, one has one has two images. One has one uh, three images. All right. Now let's look at how we accomplish that, because that's a segue into the question of I have this big honking tablet. Maybe I want to do more with it than I would on a phone. All right. So if we look at the code, what we have is we can have different layout for different layouts. All right. So here's our layout, which is our default layout. We can then have a layout large, layout small, to accommodate the different size screens. So for example, that guy being a big monitor, or not a big monitor, big tablet, big screen, is using the layout large. All right. So just like we did drawable LDPI, drawable MDPI, drawable MDPI, we can do layout large. So we can qualify these resources a lot of different ways. We've already seen an example of this by having our values and values dash FR, right? Same idea, except now we're qualifying uh, things based on the screen size. So based on the screen size, we could go in and define a layout large. And if you notice, the layout large has my text for the metrics, all right, which shows what the, what the, how many pixels there are, what the density is. It has the icon of the application. It has the robot, and then it has the bug. Whereas the small screen layout has just the metrics and the bug. What's the medium have? Oh, yeah, the, the medium, actually the medium and the small I think are the same. I don't think we have, um, yeah, I don't think we have any small devices or we don't have any medium devices, one of the two. But at any rate, yeah, the medium and the small are the same. The layout, but the large is different, and the large has the three images in there, where the me where the medium and small only have the two images in there. So, so then does this mean then that you can have the same program, mm -hmm. right? For variety of devices. Correct. Now, because one thing I can notice, like with uh, Apple, yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I, I can't speak on, on how the Mac side works. We can talk about how this works and, and uh, yeah, the iPhone, I'm not sure. I know that any iPhone app will run on an iPad, but not any iPad app will run on, on a iPhone. All right. Now, there's one other, there's a, there's a plot twist coming up in a few minutes here, all right, uh, that, that we'll get to, all right. But let's, let's continue on this train of thought, all right. Now, what if I wanted the bug to be bigger on the big display, right? Here we got the bug. 
Here we got the bug, the same size here as on this. But I got a lot of extra space on that. So they're the same size. What if I wanted the bug bigger on this? What could I do? I'll, I'll pop up the, I want, uh, l let, me, let me rephrase the question because I was kind of trying to do a couple different things and I'm not sure I stated it correctly. So let me rephrase the question. I want the bug to be bigger on the tablet than on the phone. All right. Okay. I could do that. I could go into layout large and change the width and height to something else. I thought it was only used on layout large. No, the bug is on both. The the bug is on the the the, the one that's only on the um, only on the layout large is the 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 robot. Repeat that, please. So why is the bug only sitting in the one direction? Why is the bug only sitting? The bug, uh, PNG sitting just HDPI. Because I only have one version of the bug image. So if you have multiple versions, you may be able to do larger versions. Could you larger, yeah. smaller versions? Could you I, I, I could do that. But do remember that this is relating to density and not screen size. What we're talking about now is screen size and not screen density. No, both of them. I have, uh, I have in the dimension file the width and the height of the image. So my question is, is how could I make the bug bigger? Yeah, what you said is correct. I could go in here and put in a different value, all right, and that would work. But, yeah, or, or, or refer to a different entry in the dimension file, or I could do this, copy that, yeah, then paste in here. Yeah. Values dash large. So now we don't have values French, all right? We have values large. And then we could go in our dimension file and maybe make it twice as big. All right. And now when we go and run this, All right, now, lo and behold, we have on the tablet a bigger bug. Yep, yeah, just have to take my word for it. No, we have on the tablet a bigger bug. That's a darn good question. How would you do that? Uh, the next time I have to miss a class, that's going to be you guys' assignment to figure that one out. <laughs> well, well. Unless you have a large dash FR. Yeah, I don't, uh, that might be one possibility. Uh, I'm not sure if, if you can like concatenate these things. The other possibility is you could have two constants in your domain. You could have one dimension file and then you could have, well, 
yeah, just refer to it, yeah. Probably the answer is this. And let's take a minute to do this, because what the heck. Let me take, let me take the strings file out. All right. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete the strings file out of there. Then I'm going to have a values.fr that doesn't have the dimensions. Because the dimensions probably don't depend on the language. Yeah. So I'll bet you this will work. At this point, I haven't researched this, but my intuition tells me that it will work. So values dot fr fr fr. <laughs> One of my students did not believe that I did not know how to type, and it's like, have you ever watched me like hit the wrong key six times in a row? No, I don't. I mean, over the years, I have kind of gotten a sense of where things are, but I do not know how to type. So let's go in and let's change. Let's change welcome to bienvenue, showing off my two years of high school French. All right. Now let's go and let's set this guy to French. I can envision myself one day switching it to a language that I won't be able to read the settings on, and I'll have to go see if there's anyone on campus that speaks, you know, Croatian or, or something. Let's go and we'll set it to French. Oh my God, yeah. All right. <laughs> Klingon. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right. So now if we look at this guy. Oh, good question. You see, I love when, I love when folks ask good questions. So now we have bienvenue up there and a big bug. So it got the uh, values resource file by virtue of the language and it got the uh, dimensions virtue, uh, file vir based on the screen size. Mm -hmm. That's very right. Pretty sure. Let's try. So let's get rid of. Just not the file, but just that entry. So yeah, that, that, yeah. Let me try that. Let me go in, okay, and. Sure. So do you have to redefine everything? Okay. Yeah. Do you, yeah. The question is, do we have to delete everything, or can we just? piecemeal do this. And then let's give it a shot. My guess is it, it will work or it will won't it will not work. Yeah, it went back to welcome. I believe I that, but when I was working with it, I had a couple Yeah. A little hard to see, but it's back to welcome. Right. Now, what would happen if, say, you had a file, a values file in the dimensions, and it had a different? Well, you know what? Let's try that out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a strings file in the large. I'm going to confuse it. I'm going to give it two. Yeah, well, I'm going to see what it does. I'm going to give it a French string file, and I'm going to give it a large string file. 
So you're doing two different, two different values for... Average. And two different values for welcome. So in the French, we'll do bienvenue. And in the large, we'll do here's a big Texas welcome. Because it's large, see? Everything's big and... Okay, that wasn't very funny. Okay, so now it's going to find it in both. It used Bienvenue. Oh, but, but look. Look, alert, alert. We get a, yes you do, you, you got a small bug. Yeah, I have a dimensions in French. Yeah, let me get rid of the dimensions in French. Okay. I did have a dimensions in French. I, th I thought I had gotten rid of that. Okay, now we're back to the big bug. And it says Bienvenue. So we have the proper so mix of things. The language that goes to your dash fr values folder and doesn't confuse it with your strings file in your your, your size. Uh, I'm not prepared to make that statement. Sounds like it's using your language file vendor. Well, based on size vendor, it wouldn't be full. Yeah, I would use that and it would use the dimensions from the large one. So I'm not prepared to say exactly how it parses it and determines like what to apply. It's interesting though. Isn't it? Yeah. We, I, 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 we can observe when I had a dimensions file in the French section, when I had it set to French, it used that dimension file. It didn't use the screen's dimension file. So maybe it display, you know, maybe there's a hierarchy that says language takes precedence over that. I have to say I don't, I don't know that. That's another question that we can ask you next time. I'm not going to be here for, uh, for a discussion. All right. Oh, yeah. What did you want to see? Mm -hmm. Right. But is, does it also figure the values large the same way? And the word large? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so if you use big, it wouldn't work. Okay. Correct. Okay. Now, All right. Use HDPI, would it still use it, or is it just the large, small, and extra large? Well, I could conceivably set values based on the density of the screen. And it would understand that? I believe it would. Let, let, let's try. Let's see, where, where were we at? Let me, what do I want to do? I want to use my high density phone and I'll put, I'll put something in. I'll use a string, I'll use a string value, I'll use a string value in in, in a high density phone. Let's see. So let's go in and let's say. No. So I'm going to say values. 
dash H D P I. All right. So now I have a dimensions file, and just for giggles, I'll make this. I'll make them a tiny bug. And I will change the greeting to say, welcome HD version. Could you repeat that, please? I mean, it would be nice to be able to specify the, the default size of the string in this file, but it's <laughs> All right, there's our tiny itty bitty bug down there and welcome HD version. So you could. So it seems like that, that um, yeah, it, it's smart enough to know that. Let, let's do a quick Google search. Maybe we can find a, a good resource on this. Because, I mean, I understand them individually, but, like, when you start combining things, what if I was on a high-definition high screen in France? Uh, yeah. Could, could you start putting multiple fashion? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, you could show a different, different. Uh, you could show a different image for the for the French. You could have a different layout for that. Show a, a flag. Absolutely. Different, you know, a, a lot of different things. All right. I I can't find all the all the resources uh, qualifiers that I'm looking at shows um, doing it like for sizes. Now, if you think about it, um, let's see, providing alternate. Oh, okay. Well, here's a list of them. Configure qualif oh, which you can't see. MCC, mobile co uh, country code, language and region, smallest width, available width, available height, screen size, screen aspect. So, like, some screens are, like, longer, yeah. Screen orientation. 
UI mode, night mode, screen pixel density, touch type screen, keyboard availability, primary input method, and <laughs> drawable ENRUS land applies to US English devices in landscape orientation. Qualifiers must be in the order uh, listed in table two. At this point, I'm glad that there are some restrictions, <laughs> right? So that you couldn't have, you know, large US and US large and, you know. For example, the same drawable files, you can't have a directory. Okay, repeat that, please. Uh, resource qualifiers, because because that's like the name for the dash fr, the dash large. That's a qualifier. So you could you can't mix qualifier type. You can't duplicate qualifier type in the same string. Right. Right. So it looks like there's a lot of flexibility. All right, is is the bottom line. That, that's our breathtaking conclusion after 45, 45 minutes. So you truly can't have one code, uh -huh. one executable. This, this is, yeah, this is the infrastructure that allows you to do that. Now, whether your code will make sense or look good or whatever, that's an entirely different question. Ooh, I, I lo like how I look in the dark here, if you want to look back there. As Halloween's approaching. Ooh, yeah. So, anyhow. <coughs> Uh, all righty. Um, now, there's one last twist to this. All right. One last twist to this. And that is, I can build into my manifest file which screens I want to support, or which screens the application supports. Well, I uh, believe a combination of screen density and screen sizes. All right. So, um, for example, your, qu your question about in the Mac world that um, an application runs on iPhone and iPhone and iPad versus an iPad only application. The analogous thing in the Android world would be that you would set up in your manifest that it would only run on a large screen. All right. Um, let's Google that real quick. Um, and that, that would prevent him, a person with a large screen Yep. Right. I, I believe it will not. Yeah, I believe it won't. Yeah, whether it shows up and they can't download it or it doesn't show up, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, but at any rate, they can install it. I, I'm not sure which take. But, but here it says supported screens and you can specify some parameters as far as this, whether it supports that. So that would sort of be the... the uh, the, the, the analogy to having an iPad only app. So you could do that here. Like if you had, if you had something where as, you know, you required a big, big chunk of real estate to get all the images in and all that, you could then say you don't support small screens, that you do only support large screens or, or whatever. And that would effectively make it a tablet only application. Or those big drawing boards. Yeah. Right, right, right. Right. So, so you could do it. You could do it that way. Um, but again, theoretically, you could also develop an app that worked both on that. What what you don't seem to have in the Apple world is an app that runs on both that looks different on both. Or am I mistaken? Really. Well, 
Well, yeah. That's, I guess, that's, that's a built-in functionality. Oh, okay. Yeah. For example, here's a music listener that I listen to. This is an iPhone application. All right. And when you bring it up by default, it looks like this. Nope. We're looking at an iPad. Oh, I was in the right place. Your device is an iPad. This is an iPad, right? We're looking at an i. We're looking at an iPad application. <laughs> I was doing good for a while. Now I'm starting to lose it. Let's talk BlackBerry. Yeah. Right. 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 The Windows Phone. That's okay because no one has a, has one of those. So, um, but. This is this is an iPad, and by default, if you if I downloaded, I can download an application for iPhone, all right. But in the market, it shows them separate. It shows iPhone, iPad application. Now I went and downloaded this anyhow, even though it's an iPhone. And as I said, there's a little button here that says make it twice as big, and boom, then it's big. There, it doesn't look any different. It's just bigger, all right. So there's no additional functionality. Now contrast that with, with the Android approach, whereas in the marketplace, you're going to have one application, and you can download it, but it can have hooks in there to support multiple screens. All right, so if I did that, if I downloaded it to a phone versus downloading it to a tablet, I'm going to get a different look. All right, now I can control it to only download on a tablet. That's true. I suppose I could control it to only run on a, uh, download on a phone. Maybe if it needed some of the phone functionality or whatever, all right. Um, well, no, that's that's not that's not a part of the screen. So no, I don't believe I misspoke on that. Requires smallest display compatible with no. So yeah, I couldn't only download it on a phone, but I could make it the only download on the small screen or only download it on a big screen. Questions on any of this? Okay, good. Good. Yeah. Um, the uh, what was I going to say? The um, um, the the, the yeah the the idea with this the, the, those resource files and again that that's why right off the bat it's important to separate those things out in the resource files you know because that that allows you so much flexibility in terms of tweaking parameters for different size screens and, and all that. All right. What I want to do. Now, are there any other questions on this topic? What I want to do now is, is what? Is look at the third threading example. Now, I got to confess, I didn't spend as much time studying this one as I did the, the other ones the other day. So um, well, we, we might be working through this one together to a degree. But let's go in. Let's take my tablet. Let's set it back to English. <laughs> Wasn't there an episode of Friends or something where they switched their TV to use the Spanish audio, then they couldn't figure out how to get it back, and they're watching all these shows? You know, and I, I kind of remember that. But hopefully, we'll be able to switch this. Okay. <laughs> All right, and we are back to English. All right, so let's run the third threading example. And again, we'll we'll take a look at it and we'll see what's different with it, and uh, we'll do that for the remainder of today's time. Repeat that, please. They do make splitters. Oh. <laughs> so you can deploy them. I was thinking, you know, developers are testing, you know, testers, engineers. 
I, I, I kind of like this. This, this kind of kept me on my toes today. It kept me alert, knowing, you know, having to, to be able to grab the right cable. Or... They're pretty cheap, too. They're what bugs me at home is I got all these cables, and they all look almost the same. But, like, there's a slightly bigger USB thing on, on this end. Like, the old one for my phone is, like, a little bigger than this one, or a little smaller or something, so it doesn't fit in. And it's like I'm always picking it, and this, you know, again... Yes. Right. Okay. All right. So, what we have here is we have, um, what do we have? We have a couple different, we actually have three threads going on here. All right. We have, we have these worlds that are spinning and rotating up here. Yeah. We have the counter that's counting and incrementing these things. And then we have the UI thread that's listening for this. Look at the icon is like MC. Right. Right. Total eclipse of the icon. Yeah. So let's take a few minutes to look at this and and see a little bit blurry, I can see, but yeah, they uh, let's take a look at this and see what's going on code wise. All right. In this example, wow, they only have one layout. How boring. All right. In this example, there are actually a bunch of classes. If you remember in the other examples, they sort of simplified things and they made the view also the thread. All right, The UI view was also the thread that did the counting and so on and so forth. Here they've separated things into each its own class, which you know is a better way to do it. And what they have is they have a class for the counter, the counter being the little circle with the number in it, not just the number. All right, So that's what they mean by a counter. They have a class for the planet, they have a class for the UI, all right? The UI view. Is that the threading three view? Threading three view, yeah. So our activity uses that view, which has a thread. The planets have a rotation thread associated with them, and the counter has a counter thread. So for each of them, there's sort of a object and a, a, a thread associated with that object. All right. So let's look at the threading activity, and this is very similar to the code that we've seen before. We have our um, three threads defined, our, our thread for the view, our thread for the counter, and our thread for rotation, and we create them, and we start all those threads. Let's look at the counter class and then counter thread. The counter class has all the things that you'd expect uh, for this. It has as attributes the x and y coordinates, also a value attribute, the value being the little number in the middle there. It can draw itself. We can create a counter and give it the x, y coordinates of where that counter is going to appear. We can return the value of the x, return the value of the y. We can set the value of the x, set the value of y. We can get the little number value in the middle of it, and we can set that. So pretty standard class with getters and setters. The planet class has a bitmap, 
all right, which is the, the world image. It has an X and Y position also. And it has a um, angle attribute as well. That has a Boolean that asks if it's rotating clockwise. Not entirely sure what that is. I guess uh, when we initialize it, we can rotate some of them one direction, some of them the other. Here's our constructor that accepts a bitmap and the initial position and, and which direction it's rotating, clockwise or not. This can draw itself. We can set and get all the different parameters. Which one? Well, that's just something that this is using. It's not per se an attribute of a, of a bitmap. It is um, determining when we go and rotate this, when we go to set the angle, if it's rotating clockwise, we negate the angle to have it go in the other direction. So it's an attribute of our planet class that we can set from outside of it. Okay. All right. Now let's look at our threads. All right, so those are the classes involved. Let's look at the threads. The first thread has a handler that's going to be accepting messages. All right, well, let's go to the top. It, we're creating our list of counters, our list of planets. Our constructor, we go in and we set the planet. and we randomize the position and the rotation. On the draw event, we draw our background, loop through and draw each planet, loop through and draw each counter. We have code in here that handles the touch event to create a new counter and after we create a new counter we invalidate the um, we invalidate the, the view so it gets redrawn. We then have our handler that's going to be waiting for messages from the other threads. And essentially the other threads are going to say something has happened, go in, do your thing, and redraw. So it invalidates it. Yeah, go ahead. The, uh, in the remarks, the yeah. Yeah. Right, right. I, yeah, I believe that comment is, yeah, at param, yeah. It's showing a parameter list. Like in this one, the comment is correct. It's saying that the, the parameter to this function is a context, the context to use. In this one, it's a typo because there is no parameter of counter. All right. I don't know. That's why I never do comments, right? They can never be inconsistent with your code. 
That was a joke, folks. <laughs> For those of you listening, uh, I don't know. I don't remember. But if you type in add param, it gives you a file. Okay. Okay. Could be that that was there, like in a, in in as they were working on this, that that was a parameter at some point. All right. We have asynchronized. All right, and this is what makes this, as they say, thread safe, because what this will do is this will block uh, other threads from, you know, from uh, messing up. The values. Pardon me. What what this will do is this will print uh, prevent other stuff from updating the stuff that this guy's updating. So we don't have an inconsistency. On yeah, on the on the view. Yeah. So in other words, so we don't have the rotation and the uh, the rotation and the. Just for the Okay. Yeah. Okay, all right, right, because the set rotation, they, they don't have any kind of synchronization. So, yeah, this is protecting the value of the counter, so you can't have two threads updating the value of the counter. And that's probably, is that, okay. All right. No. No, it doesn't seem to. Now let's look at the counter thread. And the counter thread goes in and does its weight. It's catching the exception. All right. It's updating the counter. It calls that method to update the counter. And then at a certain point, oh, a after it waits, after it's updated the counter values, it then calls and issues a, um, uh, sends a message to go and redraw the screen. All right. Now, that synchronize will keep this guy from calling it to update the counter again while it's still working on updating the counter from a previous uh, pass. Um, that is just a constant on the threading view. So if we look way up here. Uh, okay, I, I don't understand the question. Let's see, we want to look at the counter thread view. Android OS message. Yeah. All right, um, a rotation thread again does something sort of similar and it rotates it and calls periodically the set rotation on it. So it increments the rotation by one each time through and then if it hits 360, it sets it back to zero. Yeah, it looks like it does it one degree at a time. So this is just, again, this is just, they've, they've taken some of the things that were all combined in the one thing and broken them out. And that gives us, now we have, instead of two threads going, we have three th threads, one for the planets rotating one for the the uh, counter counting and one for the UI and the creation of the counters. Is that the recommended way to do it? 
for this example, be, for this example, you know, this is, you know, anytime you see, you know, I, you don't want to make a, a sweeping statement, but when you think this is, instead of having like, in the previous example, the view was doing the counting and it was creating the counter and all that, this seems to be a more design solution. In other words, we have more components that we could potentially use in other places. All right. We have a component for a planet, we have a component for a counter, and then we have a thread to run those. So it would seem like this would be a more full-fledged solution as opposed to everything being in the view as it was before. Other questions? Yeah, the link to it is up on is up on the web. Yeah, this isn't my example. This is someone else's. Uh, but anyhow, all right. I guess that's it.